experienced look about them. Howard Kendall has few peers as a midfield player in the second division, while in their back four, Stoke have Dennis Smith, who made his first appearance for them way back in 1968, and Mike Doyle, with uh, so many fine and competitive seasons with Manchester City behind him. So here, then, is the Crystal Palace side. Manager Terry Venable sticks to the team that beat Bristol City 3-0 in the Cup. Steve Kember has recently arrived after a spell with Leicester and Vancouver, and their top scorer is Dave Swindlehurst with 10 goals. As for Stoke, mixed in with all that experience, they've some good young strikers like Paul Randall, their recent expensive buy from Bristol Rovers, Brendan O'Callaghan, Garth Crooks, and not forgetting the dangerous Sammy Irvine. turns there by Randall and then the touch for Howard Kendall Callaghan with a shot oh word that would have just clipped into that far post it's really a swift readjustment there by Brendan O'Callaghan that said ball came to him but he got a good firm shot in and Barrage had to get down and push that around that would have just gone in so it's Richardson with the corner for Stoke and Gilbert and Nicholas both lining up to get it away. Here's Cannon sweeping it out here for Murphy. And here's Cannon again. Benick. Yes, he let it run and he ran into trouble. Kendall with a chance for Stoke to counter-attack now with Crooks stopped by Murphy. Wood. Murphy trying to get the better of Randall does so but just look at the blue shirts that are surrounding him and here's Kendall taking the responsibility of the short pass that might have been dangerous for Smith was there Irvin's there it's a dangerous game that Stoker played and that's a free kick surely given away by Kendall on Peter Nicholas I think Kendall is furious with himself and with the rest of his defence because it was Kendall in the first place who started playing a dangerous game inside his own area when Stoke might have got that ball right away. As it is, they face this free kick to be taken by Kemba with big men lined up on the far side there. Hinchelwood, Swindlehurst and Cannon. And in fact, it's... It's there by Cannon. No, the linesman is flagging and it's disallowed. What a beautifully worked free kick. As Kemba, well, we'll see what the situation is. I don't think there's any point in Cannon and Nicholas talking there to the linesman. The linesman quite unmoved and it'll have to come back. I don't think even they persuaded uh, Mike Taylor to have a word with the linesman. But uh, it's serving Palace's cause no good at all for Jim Cannon to stand there. But it was a beautifully worked free kick as uh, Kemba put it in. And it came back for Cannon to rifle it home, only for the goal to be disallowed. Foul giving Stoke a free kick. Dennis Smith coming up for this one. And Callaghan, another obvious target. And the ball does come swinging in here from Howard Kendall. And it's a goal. And Irvine has done it. blue 
as Kendall swung that one in, the smallest man really on that Stoke City side gets in there with a header, and that's beyond Burridge. Crystal Palace nil, Stoke City one. So that's a real blow then for Palace, who really had much more of this second half. Had the goal disallowed, and were forever battering themselves against this wall of uh, Stoke City defenders. And now, in a classic breakaway, Stoke have gone into the lead. With six minutes to go. And, uh, surprise, surprise, Stoke are now bringing on a substitute, Viv Busby, who's a forward. And one might have thought that they would have now wanted to sit back even more to consolidate. Oh, trouble there between Scott and Gilbert. It's a clumsy challenge in the first place. And a free kick for Palace. Murphy. This will fall for O'Callaghan. And now for Randall. Doyle's made an enormous break through the middle, but Randall won't find him. And they're taking off Brendan O'Callaghan and replacing him with Viv Busby. Well, O'Callaghan holding his the top of his right thigh. Notice that Alan Durban is now down from the director's box, the Stoke City manager. There he is. Having a word with Howard Kendall, his coach at Stoke. Well, Busby. Fulham fans remember him. Well, of course, Kendall crossing it in there towards Randall. And it comes for Richardson. And it comes for Crooks. And somehow Palace kept that out. A great piece of keeping a game by Burridge from Richardson in the first place. And then when it rebounded, Crooks didn't really get the proper sort of touch. Kendall stooping low, Busby hitting it high. Sanson. Comes for Cannon. Too close to Scott. But a chance for Hinshelwood now to keep the momentum going for Palace. Nicholas getting in there first, but the shot bouncing rather high there, but causing no trouble for Roger Jones. relief to Crystal Palace and there really well look at it there really seemed to be no chance it was optimism of the highest order I thought when he shot from that sort of range now whether Roger Jones was unsighted or what I don't know but that ball crept past him into the corner of the net Palace won Stoke City won so what a finish we've got with two goals in the last six minutes and now a little over a minute left For one of these two sides hunting for promotion also hunt and find the winning goal a free kick to Crystal Palace Sanson with it for Hinchelwood referee looking at his watch again Swindlehurst trying to get in there and uh, Scott with a chance to get it away 
to Randall. The nod down for Busby. That's a throw for Stoke. watch and the final whistle so the two promotion contenders go away with the honours even with Sammy Irvine having put Stoke into the lead with just six minutes left and I think most people would have felt that that was enough and then Ian Walsh with that amazing that number 11 with that amazing uh, equaliser and the linesman of course and in fact if we can broaden the picture out a little bit we'll see that there are three policemen escorting him off the field the linesman there, Mr. Holland, who disallowed the goal by Jim Cannon that would have put Palace into the lead because apparently it was offside. So controversy and in the end, a 1-1 draw here at Selhurst Park. Final score then, Crystal Palace 1, Stoke City 1. Uh, which uh, are strongly behind them and the longer it goes on, because they're such a strong crowd, uh, that can work against...